functions that weren't recognized in the front end, thus restricting access to the back end. We'd like some further assistance with connecting the back end contract to the front end web app, as well as some methods of transferring Ether into the smart contract. On a more personal note, I'd really like to thank MarketMake for all the opportunities and resources they've given us over the past month. We're a group of extremely motivated individuals with a lot of time on our hands, and we'd really like to pursue this project even further. We believe DeFi is the future, and we want to be a part of it. Thank you. Well, that was great. Awesome. Uh, so we'll start for, for Q&A. Awesome, thanks. Um, yeah, uh, awesome presentation, guys. Um, I guess one, one uh, so it, it sounds like this is sort of like a prisoner's dilemma game for employer-employee relationships. And presumably the idea is like, you wanna incentivize some outcome regardless of whether it's a positive or negative outcome rather than having, is, is it like you, you don't want the, I guess what is the adverse case here that like the employee just doesn't hear back? Yeah, so the worst case scenario is like if the um, if the employer basically puts in money and then the employee says that they've done their job after the time that, um, you know, when the employer can actually call the refund. Um, and if that happens, well, um, the employer, the, the employer wouldn't be able to get the money back, but the employee wouldn't really get the money in, in you know, either way. Um, so the money will just like be in the smart contract um, still and basically burnt. Got it. Okay. Um... Where, uh, you, you mentioned that you're interested in pursuing this further. What would you do as part of, of pursuing it further? Yeah, totally. So um, I the biggest trouble that I encountered when you know we were kind of building this out was connecting the back end contract to the uh, to the front end. We needed to figure out a way to um, after strapping in the MetaMask, um, being able to send Ether uh, from the front end um, and then onto the smart contract, and then having that contract uh, tr subsequently transfer Ether over to the other person's wallet. Um, and so uh, considering that we are all kind of like uh, blockchain beginners, uh, I you know you know read a lot of documentation, but was unable to find a way to do uh you know that tech, uh, technological piece so would have really really liked um you know some continued assistance on that technical matter what um what what are you kind of using as part of your I, I, are you using ethers or web3js yeah web3js um and we're using ether as the method of you know trans transaction currency right um definitely definitely check out uh ethers js uh, i feel like the documentation is a little bit easier for people who uh, like who are still kind of getting their feet wet just because it's a little bit more expensive. Wow, thank you so much for that resource. Really appreciate it. That was awesome, guys. I really love the enthusiasm here and the originality of the idea as well. I think it's I think it's quite cool uh, and something that I haven't really seen um, done before in the space. So yeah, kudos on that. Um, I don't really have too much uh, too much feedback, just uh, or questions, sorry. I just wanted to give that feedback. Uh, keep up the great work, guys. Really appreciate it, man. It means a lot to hear. And, uh, probably echo the same sentiments. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's actually pretty, pretty interesting to, to um, consider what, what, what you guys are kind of building up um, in, in, in some extent. Um, um, I'm, I'm kind of curious if, if you happen to uh, have any any other plans to, uh, to build also um, features around, um, I, I guess, communication um, channels in, in, in the platform that, that kind of make it easy for for people to kind of get um, get a chat with each other in case uh, before the, the arbitration essentially happens. But yeah, it, it actually sounds pretty pretty awesome in, in, in terms of what, what you guys managed to put out so far. Thank you so much for that thought. Originally, we were actually talking about um, having like a communications platform on the actual web app. Um, so then people can actually talk to each other regarding, you know, like the first check in um, and, you know, making sure that both sides complete their end of the bargain to uh, prevent any ether from getting burnt because we don't want that. Right. Um, so, um, you know, that's definitely coming in the future, you know, iteration of the project. Um, for now, we were trying to bang out like the, uh, the MVP of the uh, actual web app. Um, so, yeah, but thank you so much for that suggestion. Really, really appreciate it. Um, just one more comment on that. Uh, we are actually planning on having a chat feature within the 
uh, within the website. Um, but the chat feature would kind of close once the contract is agreed upon. Because uh, what we figured out in the game theory is that if you were to be like a, an employee scammer and you were trying to scam the employee, you could just message them like, oh, I'm just going to click cancel. You can click yes and you'll get your um, agreement fund back. Or you could click no and you'll lose everything. Um, so so that, that um, canceling of like any communication between them kind of makes it so that the only way for somebody to do that to like, uh, we, we called it like a fund hostage situation um, would be to like explicitly write that in the contract. Um, and then in that case, it would just be the fault of like the employer not reading the, the contract or kind of not really, um, right, not really editing the contract to their liking. Yeah, but I just want to thank the panel of judges again and also thank Mark and Make um, for, you know, giving us the time to do this. Um, would really, and, you know, like Arjun offered us, I would really, really, really appreciate like the resources um, or maybe like some pointers maybe for where we can continue to read more documentation and grow our uh, blockchain slash ETH coding skills. Awesome. That, that puts us at time, everyone. That was awesome uh, presentation. Thank you, guys. Uh, we're going to break now. For, for 10 minutes. Um, so I'll ask the judges to, um, you can make sure you're muted. Feel free to turn off your cameras. Um, we'll return at 1023 Eastern time, 10 minutes. And the next team uh, before everyone leaves is gonna be Derry one. So uh, if you could raise your hands and you'll be back in 10 minutes, thanks.
All right, we have returned. Wait until judges are good to go and turn on their cameras. Technically, we're not done yet with break, but start in about a minute. Right. Looks like we've been hopefully joined by a couple of the judges, maybe. All right. Okay. Everyone is back. The first team up is Derry One. Feel free to share your screen and begin. Hello, uh, we are team Dare one and we are building an on-chain options aggregator. And the problem that we are trying to solve is that um, it's very difficult for both developers and traders to get the best options across the protocol. And the difference between uh, protocols are pretty huge. Uh, for example, uh, last, last year, at the end of last year, I found that the uh, price difference between Hedgeek and Open was uh, more than $50. And, and now we are going to demonstrate what we have built uh, during this hackathon. So this is the front end that connects to the smart contract. And as you can see, traders can immediately know what the Ethereum price is right now, as this is pulling the live data off CoinGecko. And then this is the form that they can type whatever rate the strike price range they want and the expiry date of the options and it'll return it in this table below whether it's hegic or char so let's say they want it from you know first of january to march 31 from let's say two thousand dollars and ten thousand dollars the option size is five and then once i click submit they can see the premium they can see the expiry date they can see the option size and the price. So from so Egypt, that's ten thousand. Chan has a option for twenty two hundred, and they can do that. And they can just enter whatever input they want. And the option table will return different price of coin. All right. So to explain our system more in detail. Uh, when a user calls our contract with some condition like strike price and expiration date, the contract fetches all the options available from Hedgeek and Chan protocol for now. And uh, it calculates the price for each and then return only matched options with the price to the front end. Um, and all, all, all of this uh, requires no gas. So um, people like traders and developers who call our contract do not have to worry about the gas price at all. And for our future plan, um, at first, you're going to add more protocols. Um, I know that there are at least more than 10 protocols right now. Um, so <clears throat> we keep adding them. And then um, at some point, we will start add more assets like wrap BTC um, and uni. And then also, since we support only call options right now, we uh, would want to add other options type like put and cover calls. And finally, I think the logical ex extension of um, our protocol is to expand to other derivatives like futures. And yeah, we are pretty excited with what we are reading. And um, thank you so much for listening. Awesome, let's open up for questions. 
I, I really like how original this is. I don't think I've seen something like this um, before within the Ethereum space. And, you know, it makes sense. As you said, there's like 10 or so uh, kind of options protocols now, probably more, you know, there seems to be a new one every day at this point. So having an aggregator for this uh, is is really important, I think. And, you know, the fact that there's no gas required to fetch this sort of, sort of stuff as well is, is really great, obviously, from a usability perspective uh, as well. I guess on that note, are you going to build in kind of functionality into your own app for people to execute on these things to like, you know, buy this option or whatever on your app? Or is it just meant to be like a, a soft kind of aggregator? Yeah, so um, we want to focus on protocol smart contract cloud mostly, uh, be, but we are um, obviously like creating the front end uh, part of it as well. Um, and I've talked to other um, you know, developers in the in the in in this industry, and uh, I know at least like two other developers who are interested in um, integrating our protocol uh, to their front end. So um, we so we will have an official application, but we are also open to collaborate. You know, with other front end um, applications. Awesome, awesome. Well, yeah, great work, guys. Thank you. Um, I, I guess in terms of that um, I'm just, just just kind of curious what, what, what your considerations are when, when you kind of um, start thinking about integrating with, with other, I guess, option protocols or, or um, potentially including more complicated, um, I guess, structured products if one might call it that is, is part of what um, is, is part of what, what this this contract can accomplish. So how 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 um, how easy would it be for, for you to kind of speak around the, the existing contract architecture to kind of support um, other, other forms of um, options and other, other forms of integrations as such was what, where it was coming from. Uh, yeah, I mean, we need to understand each options protocol in detail, uh, like how their mechanism, uh, their interface, like how their contract box, how they, you know, their uh, pricing formula and stuff like that. And you know, we, we also want to make sure that these protocols are legit. Uh, so. Um, it's, it's very important for us to choose which protocol we are going to have next and understand uh, each protocol deeply. Did, did I answer your question? Sure. Um, oh, yeah, I, I think I, I get, get, get where you're coming from. Uh, just, just kind of curious about what, what it might take uh, on, on your front, on, on your side to actually integrate something along those lines and, and how flexible it is. Um, I, I guess, how, how important is it for, for you guys to be flexible in terms of the contract design? So, so as to support other other forms of uh, options. So, yeah. Okay. But but, but yeah, I mean, it's just just uh, just a thought. So, would would I mean, would, would be interested to kind of dig a little deeper and see how how um, how, how you can kind of actually uh, be. It, it it might be easy enough for, for either you or for e other teams to kind of um, start considering integrating this as part of what what they offer up to to users and start um, uh, just and, and actually see the see this as a distribution channel. So, um, yeah. All right. Um, I want, one question that I had was like, how are you actually, are you, are you aggregating just like the actual like option prices um, between, between these different protocols or like also things like, like other, other fees that are baked into the protocols themselves? Um, we, the most important thing is a premium option price, mm -hmm. uh, but we, we also um, need some other data like strike price, expiration date, um, asset type, or, you know, um, football call, stuff like that. So, so the front end, uh, in the front end, traders and developers can get um, all of these data. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I, I like, I, I was just going to say, I like how you've done it because I was asking because I, I'm just comparing it to other aggregators like one inch, which are just like horrible interfaces because they're just, they're trying, they're like pulling so much data from on chain. And uh, I like the way that you guys have done it. It's a lot cleaner. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, cool. That puts us at about time. Thanks guys. All right. Thanks, Thank you everyone. Thank Thanks. Good job. Um, the next team is AVG Market. Feel free to share your screen. Uh, the project AVG Market. So, um, 
in this question, the user acquires an NFT coupon with a unique ticket number by purchase ticket. A random ticket is drawn at a fixed time interval and eliminates the number from the pool. If the ticket number is the same as the lottery number, the user can get the coupon. And users can swap coupon today with Ave first run easily. And this is demo. Well, first of all, uh, we can create the distribution coupon. So set the coupon token name and set the coupon token token uh, symbol. And also, you can set the NFT token images, which is the de uh, deploying to IPFS. Also, you can set the ticket price as a number and also set the distribution interval um, is based on the menus and duration for buy and token for buy. Then submit, first of all, the image is, is deployed to IPFS, then you can uh, approve the contracts and just processing the contracts right now. Then, yeah, so coupon successfully created. So in the landing page, you, you can see the newly uh, distributed coupons. So you can view on the new coupon. You can buy the ticket of the coupon. So you, once you click the submit, First, we'll approve the contracts for buying ticket. Once uh, approving uh, is done, we can make the process for the contract. After done, yeah, so you successfully bought ticket. Then uh, you can see the different state of the ticket. So you have one ticket right now. So when the distribution is complete, uh, you can see the, the results of the, the coupon status. Like, so if you win number is just rotary numbers. So if the rotary number is matched with uh, your ticket numbers it shows is win is yes so so you can uh, get the uh, uh, rotary number so you can to claim the coupon just yeah, click the coupon approving then make the contract close it Yeah, so you successfully claimed your coupon. Is yeah, token rate. This is the finished state. So you can see on the MetaMask, on your account, you can get the yeah NFT token. Great. Thank you. Uh, let's uh, open it up to questions. I think we lost, we may have lost Victor. Yeah, let's see if he, we'll give him a minute to join. He may have dropped off. Stand by. Oh, is that Will? Oh yeah. Hi. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry about that. Feel free Q and A to begin. Any questions uh, from the judges? I guess uh, there it was there was mentioned of the I guess swapping the coupon to die with an Ave uh, flash loan. I, I don't think I, I I saw that in the demo or. Was is that um, something that that you have built? That's that's part of the 
the demo or is that something you have to build still? Um, actually, it's for the tree I tried. Actually, it's, it's the first time to upgrade uh, the DeFi solution to the DApp. So I tried to upgrade in the, the fresh run with Ava. So uh, that is my idea, actually. So uh, first of all, I should want to want it to follow the fresh run uh, normal process, like a swap, deposit, borrow, uh, payback process. So at first, uh, loans uh, as many die as the value of the coupon and then swap another coupon, uh, which is less current value uh, with that die, uh, maybe from DEX like Uniswap or one inch. Then after selling to existing coupon, then we pay the amount to die to Aave. But I already implemented smart contract, uh, but I, actually there are some blockers actually uh, while connecting to the Aave Fresh Runs contracts. So, and there's no because there's no enough time, so I just yeah present the demo what I did yeah yeah that, that's okay totally understand no I, I thought it was just like a, a cool idea as well so yeah all good thank you um yeah yeah it, it just just get the sense that um how 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 um easy was was it to kind of um uh, stop using, I guess, the the Chainlink um, integration for you. I, I guess was was there what what was I guess the um, um, was was there something that, that you kind of found was unusual or surprising once once you kind of um, uh, use 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 that um, use use the VRF um, functionality or um, yeah. Oh, uh, sorry, as I, I uh, was the question about that. Yeah, the, the question was just, just around the notion of how, how, how easy you kind of found it to, to actually start using, I guess, the, um, the Chainlink VRF and it, to, to kind of integrate with, um, with, with the, uh, yeah, with, with what you kind of built out as part of the, the coupon system. Um, as a normal, so, um, so to generate the random numbers, I just use, normally use it with the Chainlink VRF. It's only, uh, really easily uh, combining uh, both of them, but uh, as I said, that so is uh, regarding the first run is really difficult, and um, so yes, <laughs> oh, that, that makes sense. Uh, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, what would actually be, um, yeah, I think it, it's it's awesome that we're kind of uh, trying to construct something along these lines. So yeah, would 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 uh, also kind of encourage you to kind of have a look at uh, some some part of the, the price group builders that. Um, that pulled together is kind of uh, plugging together. So I, I guess that, that might kind of make it easy for um, thinking of, of doing, uh, um, I guess, custom interactions with, with um, NFTs in, in, in some sense and kind of uh, use, use that as a plugin to build, build this out and, and see how that works. But yeah, it's, it's awesome. Okay, thank you. Right, that puts us at time. Thank you very much, ABG Mark. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. And the next team is Diary Prosperity. Feel free to share your screen. I don't have uh, anything to share because I wasn't really very successful in the pack. Um, but basically, my project was to build a an app, a decentralized app to issue NFTs that were personalized by the creator. And then these NFTs could be used to create signature tokens that could be distributed and they, they would, these tokens would have a short lifespan. So they basically, they would authenticate a person's identity to prove they're a real person, not a bot. And so the signature tokens would uh, melt away quickly or vaporize after a short period of time so that uh, the user would have to reissue, get new ones, so that when essentially giving the person, like a business, a Um, so 
essentially the idea was to have of a Mm-hmm. Let's see if I can get back on track here. To have the credit delegation. Yeah, don't worry, take your time. Being used as uh, a means to, to capitalize and keep this thing funded. So um, let's see. It, it, uh, the wallets that are credit delegated would create a funding, a liquidation pool to essentially fund the whole project as well as give a high return back to the depositors. And essentially I had too many technical difficulties so I wasn't able to get very far with the actual coding but most of what I was able to accomplish was just trying to understand the technology to to verify or to back up my idea that it has some merit. Because essentially trying to prove people are real online is a very difficult situation uh, where I was trying to go with this. What were some of the difficulties you ran into? Um, well, my difficulties were just trying to get the development environment going. I don't have up-to-date systems. and. I had already in, in the past had tried to get like Node.js and stuff going and so my system was a mess so I didn't even want to mess with it. So I just went to AWS and set up a server and started trying to work that way and, mm-hmm. and there's lots of little, everywhere I turned there was something else that I had to figure out. So I kind of like got, to, got a scaffold beast up and running and started working on it basically ran out of time. So. My, my main difficulty was just trying to figure out like what kind of questions I could ask because it was I have so many different things to learn here. But, so I was just mostly just going from all directions trying to, to pick up different pieces of information from all the different workshops and um, the resources everybody was uh, making available. I was using scaffolds. I was using it. Yeah. Did you run into any issues with that, or was it specifically like? Um, once I got it going, it it, it works pretty good. Um, I I had got it going. I, think I got it going before about a month before, so I kind of had some experience with the getting it set up on my computer. But then I was trying to do it remotely, which made it <laughs> more fun to try to figure yeah. out. So I, which um. Uh, uh, Austin Griffith helped me there. He figured it out real quick what I had a problem where it wasn't talking. And so he just kind of said, oh, here, it's right there. It's just got to, you're doing it local host. Or you're not doing it local host. You need to change your port, open your port bus. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But yeah, I have a lot to do on this project. I'm not giving up. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. And it certainly sounds pretty interesting. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to understand a little bit more. It sounds like what you're doing is issuing a temporary token. Um, and then that token gives you access to uh, like rewards in the form of tokens and right. like staking yeah. returns. Yeah, the idea is to where the depositor is like, like depositing it in a bank um, and the, the money on deposit is like the idea would be a stable coin deposit and then it would be credit delegated. And then using all that money or you know, funds basically lend it out to generate um, returns that can, that can basically keep this whole thing afloat using basically every different protocol that I saw there. You know, it's about, they all have different features in them that were, I could see as fitting in to make it all work and like the, the governance because I, I see it what I want to occur is this thing to be decentralized and just running mm-hmm. and essentially no company or nobody involved like like essentially once people's like identities are they're put into uh, IPFS 
back in an encrypted form so they can be drawn from when they're essentially they use the their personalized token the nft would be like a um uh, like an access control uh, mechanism basically yeah they like kind of an uh, body or something like that or it'd be mm -hmm. something some hook to it to make it interesting for people to want want it but then it would be used as like a authentication key mm -hmm. so the so they could be used to create the signature token, and then those would be used to essentially a person would give it out to authenticate themselves. And it would be trusted because they could see who they are and stuff. Mm -hmm. I have an idea for how the person is authenticated. Authenticated is a real person, There's different ways of going about it, creating a, a pretty elaborate sort of method, but basically trying to separate it so that it's secure, so no organization or person can Mm -hmm. un unravel it so that basically every person can be one person in this environment and kind of give them back their individuality as people right. in a <laughs> weird sort of way <laughs> well, that's awesome so, yeah that's awesome and that puts us at about time but thanks for you know all the work and learning everything that's the main goal of these events I needed here keep on it thank you sure. um <laughs> just the thanks, yeah. presentation thing is a learning thing for me <laughs> yeah awesome um we're gonna do a now a switch here um the next team isn't here but the earlier team bizarre finance um who we had to um skip over before is so they'll be our last team um bizarre finance if you uh, can share your screen and remember to share audio and begin. Can you see this? Yes. Okay. This is Bazaar Finance, a scalable, continuous financing for open source projects via altruistic yield. We're solving the problem of misalignment between value capture in DeFi and open source dependencies. A project might create billions of dollars in value. However, the software that the project is dependent upon is only able to capture less than 1%. An average maintainer have an unpredictable income, having to rely on grants. On the other hand, for the project themselves, they may be willing to fund open source, but they know that their treasury is finite. Although they may value having their dependencies maintained, most will struggle to justify the ROI. We believe DeFi can fix this. We solve this problem by better capital allocation. We allocate a fixed portion of monthly interest earning on your savings to a recipient and the rest to your account. Every month, we split the interest into two tranches. One is a fixed amount allocation that goes to make open source revenue goal, and the excess amount is distributed to the depositors, a frictionless public good funding with positive yield. Let's say the depositor is SushiSwap and the recipient is Hardhat. Under the hood, a treasury may deposit DAI to the Hardhat vault. We then take the DAI and deposit it to Agre, giving us A DAI that straight in interest. SushiSwap would then receive B DAI, representing the principal, and the both parties can start receiving interest. The maintainer receives predictable income, while the DeFi protocols gets to make constant donation without spending, generate revenue from interest, and giving the core team the peace of mind that the upstream software will continue to grow with them. There are other benefits to this construction. The smart contract that we develop is completely trustless and autonomous. The revenue earned can be rolled over to the next month, and the deposits go into lowering the barrier to entry for the next depositors. For the depositors, they're retaining 100% of the capital without a up period. And as total value increases, the interest earned becomes competitive. We have developed a working decentralized app, deploy and integrate it to Aave on Copen Testnet. So here we can browse through the list of projects. We'll select Hard Hat. Here you can see your balance your principal, and down here, you can see total value lock, income goal, and the total amount raised. 
So we will deposit 2,000 guy. And just like that, your V token balance increases and started earning yield for Hard Hat and ourselves. There are more avenues for us to go next, including ways to increase V token utility, such as its ability for depositors to vote on features or GitHub issues. As for depositors, there are ways to reduce. Hong, I'm, I'm going to have to interrupt for a second. We're only seeing the, like the one the screen. I'm sorry, I, I didn't notice it at uh, first. Come again? We're only seeing, uh, we're not seeing the demo as it proceeds. We're only seeing the opening slide, Bizarre Finance. Oh no. Um, Is there a strange. demo that, a video demo that plays? Yeah, I, I think so. so. Could, I, could, I, could I, yeah, could I share this on yeah. our Zoom? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think there could be something wrong with my, my desktop because the video is playing on my end. Okay. Okay, hold on. Give me a second here. Stand by, I'll see if I can share. Okay. All right, um, you can Stand by. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry about that. All right, I'm about to share now. Sorry. Thanks for pointing it out, Andrew. I was like refreshing my screen over and over again, trying to figure out if it was on my end. Yeah. <laughs> is it sharing now? It is not. Okay, stand by guys. I'm having my own technical problem here. Don't worry, it's always it's always the last. <laughs> All right, restarting. I will restart. I now have everything set. Sorry about this. Okay. Scalable. Continuous financing and now I will expand it. via altruistic yield. We can just see how this code, the not the video. Okay. Let me try that again. Let me give this one more try, guys. Okay, now let's try. DeFi and open source dependencies. Is that good? Mm -hmm. A project might create billions of dollars in value. However, the software that the project is dependent upon is only able to capture less than 1%. An average maintainer have an unpredictable income, having to rely on grants. On the other hand, for the project themselves, they may be willing to fund open source but they know that their treasury is finite. Although they may value having their dependencies maintained, most will struggle to justify the ROI. We believe DeFi can fix this. We solve this problem by better capital allocation. We allocate a fixed portion of monthly interest earning on your savings to a recipient and stream the rest to your account. Every month, we split the interest into two tranches, one is a fixed amount allocation that goes to make open source revenue goal, and the excess amount is distributed to the depositors, a frictionless public good funding with positive yield. Let's say the depositor is SushiSwap and the recipient is Hardhat. Under the hood, a treasury may deposit DAI to the Hardhat vault. We then take the DAI and then deposit it to Agre, giving us a DAI that streaming interest. Sushi swap would then receive B DAI, representing the principal, and the both parties can start off receiving interest. The maintainer receives predictable income, while the DeFi protocols gets to make constant donations without spending, generate revenue from interest, 
will continue to grow with them. There are other benefits to this construction. The smart contract that we develop is completely trustless and autonomous. The revenue you earn can be rolled over through the next month, and the deposits go into lowering the barrier to entry for the next depositors. For the depositors, they retain 100% of the capital without lockup period, and as total value increases, the interest earned becomes competitive. We have developed a working decentralized app, deploy and integrate it to Aave on Copen Testnet. So here, we can browse through the list of projects. We'll select Hard Cat. Here, you can see your balance, your principal, and down here, you can see total value lock, income goal, and the total amount raised. So we will deposit 2,000 DAI. And just like that, your B token balance increases and started earning yield for Hard Hat and ourselves. There are more avenues for us to go next, including ways to increase B token utility, such as the ability for depositors to vote on features or GitHub issues. As for depositors, there are ways to reduce overheads, such as depositing into index of projects like E2 clients or Web3 tooling, or a pool that acts as a Bitcoin grants donation manager. We did the math, and with $50 million in total value lock, we will have enough to fund over 100 developers at a minimum base income of $50,000. We think our solution unlocks the next level of open source contributions within the Ethereum ecosystem. In such a way that to truly scale alongside the application layer with full sustainability. Bazaar Finance, a scalable, continuous financing for open source projects via altruistic yield. You can visit us at thebazaar.finance. Awesome, guys. Thanks. Let's open for uh, questions. Um, this, is, this is fantastic. Like, holy crap. This is an excellent idea. Uh, with excellent execution, um, then it is extremely, extremely needed in the space. So well, well done. Um, I, so there was, there's, I also really liked the, the possibility of like having indices of, of different like open source projects, because I think that's, that's probably, that was actually gonna be my first question before you, uh, before you mentioned that, because I think like as a, as a person running a, a company, like I wouldn't want to have to go and do due, due diligence on a bunch of open source organizations. Like it would be nice to just like blanket support all of them. Um, I guess my secondary question would be like, uh, I, I think, uh, you know, people running protocols and like protocol treasuries are going to be significantly more risk averse than uh, your average deep ID gen. And so um, I think one one concern or like one thing to, to, to like think about is uh, what is the potential, you know, like risk associated with depositing into these protocols? And like, have you guys thought about like insurance and cover against that? Yeah, um, we, we did think about that. And and for us, it's, uh, we, we also look at those like group of depositors as two different groups. So I think being like treasury, I think they can absorb more risk. Um, so, so one of the things we're looking at is ways to uh, using like Nex Nexus Mutual or other insurance protocols and a way to for people to select different uh, yield uh, interest bearing um, um, protocols that they have like a risk tolerance for. So that, that's definitely something that we thought about. Yeah, I'm, I'm certain that treasuries would be willing to accept a, a lower interest if it included like, like protection, downside protection against like any potential hacks and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I thought it was really good as well. I'm pretty, pretty impressed by it. I'm a big fan of kind of like Gitcoin and funding, you know, open source projects. And, and this, you know, makes a lot of sense, right? And I'm with you, you know, there's a lot of money kind of floating around and not a lot of it goes to the, you know, the underlying technology that actually supports all of this stuff. So everyone else can make money. So yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, echo Arjun's thoughts here that I thought, thought it was a really cool, uh, well executed um, project as well. Uh, I don't really have any questions. Just wanted to give that, that feedback. Uh, on, on that note, Anthony, is that uh, we, we see that as um, 
open source not getting funded as a kind of like a risk as well to these protocols. So, so effectively from perspective of risk that Arjun just brought up, it actually de-risks them because if they are a patron, if they are a sponsor, then they make sure that these like protocols that they are consuming that like, continue to, to grow with the, uh, with the application that they're building. Yeah, I mean, that makes a lot of sense as well, because I mean, even if we go as low as the Ethereum base layer, like I'm not sure if you've seen like the core developers and how they're like, you know, there's not many core developers, right, that work on this stuff and they're responsible for the whole network and, you know, they, um, it's not just them, but like all of these other kind of dependencies. So yeah, definitely uh, uh, kind of feel that. Would uh, this just be interesting to, to even expand upon and, and just, just encourage um, you to think about what, what it might mean to in, in, include them, I guess, uh, the, 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 the notion of utility that, that you touched upon for B tokens, because uh, that, that might essentially translate into, um, uh, might, might be very, very interesting to actually see that being used towards the, um, the, the creation of other, other forms of licensing schemes and, and how, how, especially for, um, I guess, um, the, 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 the core developers work working um, on, on some, some of these um, on, on some of these public utilities as such. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very curious to see what, what um, people would, would make of this in terms of um, having, um, having external, um, uh, I guess, feedback from, from the community and, and having that way in into the, the, the overall roadmap. But yeah, I, I think it's, it's going to be a very interesting, um, I guess, way of in introducing more um, more, more, more forms of feedback in, in, in that context, um, especially around the, the utilization of the, the, the resources as they come. Because uh, yeah, um, funding is funding is an awesome, awesome thing. That, that's 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 always needed. Uh, I think it's it's going to be even more interesting to kind of get uh, people to kind of weigh in with with uh, with, with resources like uh, like like feedback with with the help of Btoken. So yeah, it's it's going to be super super interesting to see how that goes forward. So are you are you guys planning on following up? with this, like continuing to, to build this out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, actually, at the start of the hack, we, we were planning to deploy to mainnet. Um, so, so we spent kind of like significant time on the smart contract side and not and on the application. You didn't want to spend $1,000 to do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's exactly where we were. Um, but, but yeah, um, we are looking to explore what it means to, to integrate with like Gitcoin grants and I think like getting plugged into this ecosystem, but also getting, getting feedback, right, uh, from, from other applications. And, 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 and yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. I just wanted to add, um, do we still have some time? Yeah, take it. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add that um, I'm, I'm a part of several like grants giving DAOs and we're uh, currently looking into uh, treasury management um, options um, and also like the value that we're adding to our grants recipients as well. So as a treasury management solution, um, I think this is an added uh, feature for Bizarre Finance for DAOs to just passively contribute to the projects that, that are supporting in the ecosystem. Yeah, that's absolutely a really, really good idea. Um, I know a bunch of DAOs are just sitting on funds right now. I'm not really sure where to deploy them. And like, it's it's really like, really like the main trade-off that you have to, to get people aligned on is like, what is the risk of deploying this capital in this way versus, versus just letting it lay there. Um, and if you're able to sell people on, on like, uh, like I, I would almost, I would almost even say that like most organizations will not care about receiving interest themselves as long as the risk is low. Um, yeah. Well, all that right, that, that puts us at time. That's awesome job. Time. Thanks guys. Uh, that's actually the last um, project we're gonna do tonight or today, this afternoon, this morning, wherever we are. Uh, I wanna thank the judges, you guys are awesome. Uh, thank all the teams. Um, judges note, uh, you guys will get an email uh, from Kartik about follow-up and next steps and stuff like that. Um, thank you once again. We have a couple more judging sessions tomorrow and the closing ceremonies later this week. Uh, this, I'd like to say goodbye to everyone. Thank Thanks, you very Andrew. much. Um, thank you.